guys, welcome to another video where we're going to explore Denmark. We are visiting my dad this weekend and this is the house where I grew up and it's kind of magical for me to get to show you guys all of this. I did an Instagram from here years ago, but oh, oops, he found us a ladder. Uh uh, Max, you have to get down. Life is never ever boring with a toddler. Well, we're going to check out a manor house today. I haven't been there since I was a kid, and then probably we might go to a beach later, but we'll see. This is a very lazy start today. We started with a picnic. <laughs> Except for the fact we've already been up for four hours, but yeah. Max is ready to head in. He's going in. I guess we better move after him. Time to go. Tickets. Oh, you need a sticker? <laughs> I get one. You get a sticker. It says, Her går hissel. And to those of you who don't know, it's a manor house. And this is actually one of the really old ones, so it's not as fancy, it's not like a castle. Uh, but it's still a manor house and it ruled a big area in this whole uh, region. So let's check it out. It has the farm wings all the way around, so it has four sides. And you enter through the gates. In this whole farm, they might only have maybe 10 that were actually hired to work here. But the deal with the manor house is that they kind of rule the area. So the way of the other like small farmers in the area to uh, pay the tax is they have to do work on the manor farm in the area. So they all belong to a farm. And the funny thing is that the lines that you see where the rocks are formed, like shaped out in lines, is that every family, like every farm in this area, when it was time to harvest and they call in all the farmers and then every house in the whole area had a slot. We've seen manor houses where the whole courtyard was just filled up with big lines. So every farm and every city would have to line up so they could see and quickly count if everyone had shown up. Kind of a crazy world, but it's fun that all of that history still is visible in the rock formations. Okay, my granddad was working here. He was born in 19... Um, the year 1900 and he was about 15 years old when he worked here. All the interior and the furniture and so on is from the early 1900 and the late 1800. So it's very authentic. It's kind of crazy to see how the kids they had uh, these toys when like more than a hundred years ago, but it's kind of fancy in here because it's a manor house. They had, the kids had their own room. And, uh, oh, yes, they did. They had their own room and the, they wore, the girls wore black dresses in the winter and white or light dresses during the summer. That's kind of funny. So that's when you can tell what season it was. The last owner of the manor house was actually a theologist, so he read and studied a lot and he actually taught at a Danish high school. It's kind of a Danish phenomenon and I can go into that another time, but it's a place where you go to get a lot of knowledge and learning and it's been a big part in the Danish culture. So he worked there and when he died, he put it in his will that he wanted all these books to be preserved so that further studying could be done from them. He obviously loved knowledge. It's kind of cool that they're still here.
it feels super personal in this manor house and I think it's because they kind of preserved everything from the family who was the last to own it so there are so many family photos everywhere I'm sure they're just replicas or duplicates or something and the family actually had the original pictures but it's really cool and I haven't seen that before I've been to castles and places like that but that's more like old oil paintings of people that just seem random but photos to me just work really well Max really wants to eat this food, but it's all plastic. It's just fake food. <laughs> I like I love this old kitchen. Over here, you can see the old cooktop furnace thing, and then over here, they have. A thing to make waffles and that's for Ebleskiewa. So those of you guys from the States who have Danish heritage, you probably still are familiar with Ebleskiewa. And that's how they used to cook them in these big ones. And those blue kettles over there and all of this blue stuff, it was kind of a brand that was called Madame Bleu. Madame Bleu. So everything was for the kitchen, it was blue and it just kind of created this thing of where everything in Danish kitchens for a period was blue which I think is really funny and you can actually still get them and it's one of the things that I really want but I don't drink coffee <laughs> but make it, maybe I can use it as a planting pot or something but I love them. There's this Danish TV series called Metador and it shows the history from Denmark from I think 19 late 20s up till after the Second World War and there was this kitchen maid and she her name was Laura and she had that blue set. It just created this mental image in my head that I wanted one one day for some weird reason. Maybe it's just called branding. These copper kettles were used for boiling the geese when they needed to take the feathers off and they boiled all of the laundry in there as well. Kind of cool. So it's called the scullery and it's kind of where a lot of the like rough meat prepping took place so they would do all of that in here and then in the real kitchen they would do all of the finer cooking and stuff but this is really the heart of the house where they did all of the prep they needed to have food for the whole season. This is the workmen's room and this is actually where only the men ate. Can you believe that? Only the men sat down. 12 to 15 of them employed at this farm. And then the maids, they all just ate standing up in the kitchen. Good thing we have equal rights now. Only the men sat down. The entrance here is made super narrow and low so the horses wouldn't go in here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. This manor house is situated kind of in a like, small peninsula, so we are going to chase a good view because we can see some water through the trees, so let's see if we can find it. Wow, this is really gorgeous. They have this little viewpoint down in the bottom of the garden, and you can see the island over there. It's awesome. It's really quiet, hardly any wind, so you can actually see the reflection of the boats in the water. Pretty cool. Time for another picnic and look at that view. That's amazing.
wasn't always room to put all these people who worked here, so they just had to stay bundled up, two, three people in one tiny little bed. Whoa! There was a bird. I don't like birds that much. These carriages are so pretty. Most of them have been donated to here. It's just so funny to read the individual stories of the carriages where it's like one dude producing something and he had a lot of them and then he sold them. And I just can't imagine having that much money and wealth tied up into these carriages and then the car comes along and you can't really use them anymore. Obviously there was a transition period, but still that's a lot of money just kind of going to waste for something completely new that everybody had to have. It's kind of crazy to think that this farm has been here since 13 something. I saw a sign that said 1320, 1340. That's really old. <laughs> Not that much of this is original, but I'm pretty sure that that building right here, that's original. And then the others have probably been rebuilt after because I do remember there was a fire at some point. There's always a fire at some point or two or three. We've been here for mm. how many hours? Three hours probably. Uh, four. Yeah, in total. Yeah. But we've been outside on the lawn enjoying the really good view for mm. most of that time. This is a really cool little museum. It is a manor house, but it's not super big. Right? Mm. So it's very yeah. local and it's definitely a really good experience. I agree, absolutely. And it's what? nice weather today. Yeah, I found the fact interesting that the kids that worked here, they work for 12 hours. So they made a mention of it on one of the slides that showed that um, they had really crummy sleeping conditions and all that stuff. It was cold and it was humid, but they might not have noticed it that much because they were working 12 hours, so they were really tired every night. <laughs> And uh, then you have the big house up here where everyone lived in fancy living rooms and it's just such a big contrast and it's always kind of fascinating when you get to see both sides of the story. We're going to go home now. We've really enjoyed our visit to Hessel Manor House. I'll leave the link to this place in the description down below if you're interested. It's a really easy place to bring a picnic and come with children. It's only 50 kroner, which is maybe seven dollars or something like that around there less than 10 for sure and uh, so it's really cheap it's a good place to go if you want to just see something interesting and enjoy that view for a few hours see you guys next time bye